please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Plastic pollution has emerged as one of the greatest environmental challenges. Every year, the world uses 500 billion plastic bags, and 50% of the plastic that we use is single-use or disposable. Each year, at least 8 million tons of plastic ends up in the oceans, which is the equivalent of a full garbage truck every minute. In the last decade, the world has produced more plastic than in the whole of the last century. Needless to say, this has severe environmental consequences. The theme, therefore, for this year's World Environment Day is Beat Plastic Pollution. It is a call to action for all of us to come together to combat this menace. To take forward this discussion, I have with me today Eric Solheim, the Executive Director at UN Environment, uh, Nikhil Meswani, who will be joining us, uh, the Director and Member of the Board of Reliance Industries, Stephen Ranstrand, the CEO of Tomra. We also have with us Afro Shah. You know, we all know him very well, the Environment Activist and UN Environment Champion of the Earth and Bia Mirza, the UN Environment Goodwill Ambassador. All of you, a very warm welcome to the CNBC TV 18 studio here. Uh, you know, Eric, let me start with you. You know, uh, there are so many problems uh, when we talk about environmental issues surrounding this uh, earth. You know, it's not mm. just plastic. There are several others, but you chose plastic as this year's theme. Mm. Tell us about how grave the situation is and why you went with this theme this year. This problem is now horrendous. I mean, you, you find plastic at the bottom of the Mariana Depression in the Pacific. That's 11,000 mm. meters down. I mean, much longer down than Mount Everest is up. You find it in the Arctic. You find it absolutely everywhere, far, far from where there is any human being. Mm. You find it in cities. Yeah. Uh, and we see seabirds, turtles, whales, but even also cows and camels and elephants dying because they, they mix up uh, plastic with food. They mm. eat it. And at the end of the day, it's a danger to you and me because there is hardly any drinking water on the planet now without small pieces of plastic. Mm. And of course, eating fish, we can get plastic into our body. So it's a huge health and environment problem. The mm. good news is, of course, we cost it, we can solve it. Well, you know, it's so easily and readily available, which is why I think the problem is even more graver. But uh, Stephen, if you could tell us, you know, your company does something to recycle the waste. Uh, tell us a little more about, uh, you know, what role the company plays in the larger scheme of things to combat this plastic pollution. I'd be happy to. Actually, the journey started in 1972 up in, in Nordic Norway, where uh, we started uh, innovating technologies to take bo back bottles and cans. Mm. Meanwhile, we are spread over 80 countries. We take back uh, some 37 billion bottles every mm. year. And we have emerged from the air also into sorting, where we sort waste in yeah. uh, different uh, uh, treatment plants. And we also have taken it further to sort uh, food products. So mm. meanwhile, these sensors which we have as heart of the technology mm. plays a big role in changing the society. Mm. And, and we, we want to, as a dream here, avoid new plastics from entering the ocean. Mm. Uh, that is kind of the concept where we want to build a system so mm. the consumers at land mm. uh, based can avoid uh, you know, uh, wasting it and that uh, we work on closing the loop and building a circular economy. All right, um, you know, we'll come back to the circular economy concept, but there, you know, given the magnitude of the problem, I mean, what is the best way to combat it? Are we looking at a complete plastic ban? Is that the best possible solution? Because no. it's so easily available and it's cheap and it's, you know, uh, sort of the only means uh, to use sort of if you're looking at, you know, disposable gloves, for instance, syringes. I mean, it's something that we use on a daily basis. Plastics are not bad. Mm. They are lifesavers. Uh, when plastics are used correctly, uh, they have actually contributed to a significant improvement in health and safety mm. and security of human life. Mm. It is unfortunate that the way we've managed plastic waste mm. and the way we've used plastics irresponsibly, mm. irresponsibly that mm. has led us to the situation that we find ourselves in. Mm. So the, uh, I don't believe, in my humble opinion, I don't believe that the solution is to ban plastic altogether. Mm. I think the theme of uh, beat plastic pollution very clearly emphasizes on the fact that there is a immediate need for human beings to recognize our consumption of plastic mm. so let's become conscious of how much plastic we're using on a daily basis mm. and 
specifically become aware that we can so easily mm. refuse single-use plastics that right. are unnecessary and are totally mm. avoid avoidable. Mm. So alongside that, the hope and the aim is to inspire industry and government and policy to use um, innovation and technology to improve mm. on the systems that we have yeah. uh, in packaging, of course, but also to improve waste management systems, mm. recycling systems, because, I mean, if you think about the statistics, one that really baffles me is that oh, people buy a million plastic bottles mm. a minute. Mm. And 90% of these bottles are not recycled. Yeah. That's a frightening number to mm. even think of. Mm. And then you multiply that with the density of population that is using packaged water to drink. Mm. And it's so easy to say no to packaged water. You carry your own water from home or from wherever you are, use it, use a metal bottle. Absolutely. You know, of course, you had some first-hand experience battling this problem. Just, yeah. uh, you know, I think it's a wonderful story to share if you tell us, you know, how uh, the Ridley Turtles have now come back to the <laughs> Wasoba Beach. They, they, I must tell you, they came to bless us. I always say that, you know, <laughs> when you give back to nature, nature gives back to you. Yeah. Olive Ridley arriving after 25 years is precisely that sign. Mm. Uh, but to talk about what Eric spoke and what Stefan, and to add on to what Dia said, see these problems emanate from our choices of life. Mm. The question boils down, how do you control these choices? So some people are of the view the choices must be controlled by law. Mm. Some people are of the view that it must be some policy. Mm. Uh, to my mind, I have worked at the lowest denomination. It has to be a combination of multi-factors. Mm. If you say only law will work to save the environment, I strictly disagree with it. If you say only an individual will work, I strictly disagree with it. You'll have to have a multi-pronged strategy. Mm. So you'll set a goal which is short term, medium term, long term, which mm. is so vital. And one thing which I really hate when I go to my beach or go to the slum is uh, making environment protection an event. Mm. This we must give up because we live then under a hallucination that we have done enough mm. when we have not done. You know, uh, environmental protection or love for your nature must become monotonous, boring, and part of our weekly schedule. As you go to shop for your food, as you go mm. to shop for your clothes, you must do that few hours of that environmental protection, mm. which is so much required. Look at my beach. Look at where we live. I mean, it's all gone and done with. Yeah. I can't even put my hands in water. I love water. I'm a water baby. Yeah. I, I could be suffering due to for all of a depression, you know, saying that, look, I have a water in front of me. I can't go. Yeah. And I live on the beach. So that, that's a dichotomy which we are faced with as a society, as an individual, and as, as people who are in the governance module. Yeah. So each one will have to uh, bite the bait properly. Um, Nikhil, you know, you're the representative from the industry here. Uh, tell us about what uh, incentive really can be given to the industry to be more environmentally conscious, or as you know, Afroz was saying, uh, you know, is it uh, the legal, uh, the legislative changes itself that will drive this change? Uh, to, uh, thank you. Uh, I will take on from where uh, Dia and Afroz uh, made their comments. Uh, first and the foremost, let me uh, educate all by saying that if you look at the environmental footprint of plastics and you compare it to glass, metals, paper, are you aware that plastics use only one liter of water compared to thousand liters of uh, the other substitutes and it consumes only two-thirds the energy and therefore it is uh, the best choice out of all of them. So it, the idea is to reduce the consumption of plastics on a day-to-day -day basis, which is perfectly understandable and appreciable. But at the same time, it is just to let everyone know, about 65 to 70 percent of the plastics in India is currently recycled, and out of which more than 50 percent finds home into end uses that do not need to be recycled. For example, they are used to fuse fibers in road and these fused fibers which are used in road give you the roads that never crack and which everybody appreciates or these are used to convert into uh, fibers that are very soft which are filled into our pillows, our mattresses, our seats and they in turn find uses which are then fully recyclable. So as far as PET industry in particular is concerned, the recycling is now reaching close to 80 percent and I am sure that if we were to look at the thickness of plastics 
uh, it is very easily possible to take this recycling rate at which all of us will be happy and committed to our environment. The government can only do their two things, uh, kind of formulate the rules on one side and the incentives are only given initially till uh, this becomes a way of life because the awareness and collection in, in the initial days is going to take some time. But to have government to permanently incentivize this, I think, is asking for too much. On that note, we'll take a very short break, but don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a bit. Welcome back. You're watching a CNBC TV 18 special on the World Environment Day. What is really the cost involved and even the opportunity when we're talking about recycling and being more sustainable for industries? I tend to believe that we should start with what is the simplest. And the simplest is to avoid all the plastic products we simply don't need. Yeah. There's any amount of plastic product which doesn't serve a real purpose in society. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the Parliament of Chile in South America yes, they prohibited plastic bags in Chile, saying we, we don't need them. European Union the day before prohibited straws and a number of other products in, yeah. in Europe. Why, why do we need straws? Can we drink <laughs> right from the bottle or, Sip it. or, or right, right from the cup? <laughs> I mean, you won't believe it. The average North American is using 600 straws per person per year. So let, let's start with this. And why, why would you wrap two apples, hmm. put it on a plate on plastic, wrap a huge amount of plastic around it? Let's get all these out either through. Uh, cust customers ourselves say we don't need them mm. or through government simply prohibiting them. Then we move on to the more difficult which are all those plastic products which serve a purpose in society say conserving mm. food longer mm. uh, or making our cars much lighter so that they consume yeah. less uh, less gasoline which, or, which is good and then this goes how the, these can be brought in mm. how they can be recycled mm. uh, or how they can be replaced by other materials which also conserve food mm. but which doesn't destroy the nature. Stephen, you know, you interact with a lot of companies that are trying to be more sustainable. I mean, what advice would you give? How do you make the business more profitable at the same time be sustainable and, you know, uh, recycle these products? Yeah, um, I think, uh, first of all, the, the government has a very important role to play here. No doubt. Let me give yeah. you an example, another water fronting society in New South Wales in, mm. in, in Australia, mm. they put up a target to reduce littering by 40%. They went live with a system in December, which uh, we had the uh, privilege to install. Mm. And by end of February, they had collected 250 million bottles and cans, including Tetra Pak uh, mm. uh, packaging. So, you know, if you put up a system, you put an ambition, it's possible to do it. And I think uh, the industry has a very important role to play here. Mm. Uh, we don't need to debate the good and bad about plastic. There is mm. a mm. lot of use for it and, and it's good as mm. a material. But how do you design it for recyclable? Mm. How do you, uh, you know, reuse it? So, so looking at that, and in my world, in my view, the consumption of plastic and packaging waste as such will mm. just increase. As we see the digital economy taking off, I mean e-commerce, yeah. there will be more and more packaging waste. So yeah. we really need to engage the mm. value chain here, how we design it so that we can take it back. And mm. then last but not least, the consumers have a very important role to play. So we have to work on the behavior, mm. but we also need to shape the incentives and convenient technologies to collect the material. Mm. And that's possible. We do it in 80 countries. Yeah. And, you know, the best examples go from a collection rate to not from 60%, which we mentioned here, I think, which in fact is a disaster because if 40% is ending up in the nature, we have yeah. a real problem. Yeah. But, you know, the best example, the best in breed are 99.5%. Yeah. And I'm sure India can make much more here uh, if we uh, work on, on the government, industry mm. and, and the consumers. Tavis, what would you like to see from the government in terms of policy support that's imperative at this point? First of all, if Nikhil is hearing me, Nikhil may smile sure loudly. Can. I must tell him the problem which I face at the ground level. Mm. There are technical people, they'll answer that. What we have is, I'll take you to a very micro level and which is a practical level, multi-layer packaging. Mm. You know, I have a waste bank. I mm. work on a population of 40,000 who are on the human ocean conflict zone. Collected 1,500 kg lying there. It's still lying on my beach at one corner. 
we don't know how to recycle it. Mm. So the best possible su solution suggested was the uh, sender to pyrolysis mm. in Pune. So they say one truckload has to be 10 tons, and those are very f the chips packaging and food packaging. So the industry, when you talk about implementation of EPR, if mm. Reliance wants to do it or Plastic Association wants to do it, they'll have to look at these micro factors which are working. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you tackle multi-layer packaging? And every household That's has that. Impossible to recycle. Impossible. Nobody wants to touch it because touch it. there's aluminium, there's plastic, there's yeah. paper, yeah. and you can't separate it. In fact, the garbage picker who buys garbage calls it kachra himself. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> the guy who's picking up the kachra calls it kachra. So now these are at the macro level, but at the larger level, I'll tell you, if we can go on arguing mm. till cows come home about yes. pros, cons, what should be done, but mm. immediate ground action is needed. Yes. I've lost my beach, I've lost my ocean, my marine species and tatters. Mm. It's a very emotional pitch I'm making, but you must rise up and come out. Mm. You can't wait now the Prime Minister and the government to react. Mm. If you had a, a what you call under plastic waste management rules, a directive from a government, a lawmaking body told you to form an EPR, it's not done till now. Yeah. It's almost six years. For how long are we going to wait? Hmm. Okay, yeah. you know, their influencers also play a big role in, you know, uh, shaping the thoughts of people on uh, sensitive issues like this. You know, if you look at the examples of the West, where, for instance, if you look at Matt Damon, if you look at Emma Watson, they've been champions of this cause. Do you think back home here, we need more influencers to really come out in support of these causes and talk about them in public? We have, uh, in fact, I mentioned this the other day when we were on the Warsaw Beach. Um, I feel that there is a revolution mm. under, underway right now in India. There is an extraordinary level of participation mm. by citizens um, and, 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 and they're demonstrating a commitment and a will to change things at the ground level and are also inspiring and influencing policy and government. Mm. Um, and I'm one of those people. Mm. And uh, a, a lot of the work that I've managed to do over the last decade mm. has only been possible because I have been so deeply motivated and inspired by mm. extraordinary citizen participation. Mm. And, you know, to see people, children, mm. uh, teachers, uh, lawyers, mm. uh, architects, um, people from all over the country mm. willing to put their best foot forward and just function from a very innate understanding that all of us must, uh, must actually have, but for some reason we seem to have forgotten, mm. that we are nature. Mm. We are not separate from nature and mm. what we do to nature we are in fact doing to ourselves. And the other growing awareness within every every community with, uh, across the country is that there is an umbilical link between environment and, and uh, economy. Mm. Uh, you cannot imagine actually progressing as a nation without taking um, environmental security along with you. Okay. And um, I, I think there are many voices emerging in mm. my industry, mm. in the sports world. Mm. Uh, I can speak of colleagues who have in the last few years really come forward to, uh, to speak up and celebrate mm. uh, important issues. All right, I think... Uh, two, two things, Ritu, before you wind up. You need leaders... I'm not like, winding up yet. Okay, so you <laughs> need leaders like Eric as well. Yes. Yeah. You know, that's so important. And let me share my experience. I was cleaning a beach in some remote part in Versova in Mumbai. Mm. Eric took over as environment chief, and that's how you provoke. You yeah. provide the impetus to the movement. Mm. He looked at me and he came down. He said, I stand shoulder to shoulder with you. Yeah, and I then when the citizens get around yeah. saying, look at this leader who's flown from thousands of kilometers to be with you. Hmm. So that's why it's really several, important. Yeah, there were politicians, there yeah. were uh, you know, actors, there were actresses, everybody who came yeah, down in yeah. support of that. Uh, but at that point, quickly, I think, Nikhil, you wanted to add on uh, you know, what more we need to see in terms of incentives and support for this movement to really carry on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So first, yes, absolutely. So there were, uh, so there were two or three points I needed to make. One was all of us are, first and the foremost, I completely agree with Afros, Dia, and Eric, and I'm thankful for their comments. Uh, we all know what is uh, reduce, reuse, and recycle. I will add to it a reinvent, because currently the technologies are available whereby uh, any type of plastic, including multilayer, can now be recycled, and it can be converted from waste to fuel. And to a large extent, it can be done even without some level of segregation. This is now under pilot testing, and I'm reasonably sure that we will succeed in this initiative soon. Secondly, 
the awareness that is growing is a good thing because the solution to a problem first is first realization of the problem and then there will be awareness that, that is awareness is doing exactly the same and once we make sure that that is uh, aligned there will be enormous business interest and commitment to the environment with especially from people like us who will not shirk our responsibilities to make sure that we make this a reality uh, towards a clean india and towards a swachh bharat as our honorable prime minister says before i thank all of you dia i think you have a poem you wrote for world <laughs> the earth day if you could please recite just a para for us okay well i basically wrote this poem to connote what earth day means and yeah. wanted to mention why uh, dennis hayes even brought about this yeah. uh, special day for all of us to help us know that we're all connected um he called upon each one of us to make this a matter that united us a day marked to bring people together no matter what caste creed or color the largest secular holiday in the world and why do we need this day you may ask because our home is threatened by a devastating loss a loss of consciousness to such a degree that climate is changing drastically our earth is being ravaged to feed endless greed humans need to recognize the autonomy of sentient rivers oceans forests wildlife and how they harmonize our lives and bring to us health that outweighs any currency so we must honor nature's democracy all right on that very beautiful <laughs> note uh, we've come to the end of this program all of you you know eric stephen afros they are nikhil there all of you thank you very much for joining in it's a wrap up from all of us here at cnbc tv 18 many thanks for watching